Hello users. In this video, we will show a live demonstration of how to go about building a, a machine learning model using the big Google BigQuery ML engine. Uh, and before we actually start with the modeling process, uh, we will quickly walk through some of the basic initial steps of uploading data to, to the Google Cloud and then accessing that data into the Google BigQuery console for uh, queries. Uh, all of most of these all of these steps have uh, been documented in the word word document here uh, for data mining uh, and it will be useful if you if you follow these steps along with the video okay so let us start i will go to uh, my console i'm assuming that by now you have uh, created and activated your uh, gcp account uh, if you've never uh, created a project here, most likely you will see this as a blank page with an option to create a project. Otherwise, for creating new projects, uh, you just go to the drop down here and click on a uh, new project. Uh, for projects, all you have to do is just enter a name for the project and hit create. So, um, once the project is created, the first thing you need to do is create a cloud storage bucket for for this project uh, the bucket is basically a container where you will keep all the data sets uh, that you'll be using for this particular project so uh, you go to the navigation menu uh, scroll down under the products tab and you'll see storage here i've already pinned it to the top so i can see it here go to storage and hit create bucket and then follow the steps as mentioned in the uh, Word document. Uh, in for, for this particular step also, you just have to put a unique bucket name and then just uh, select all the default options unless you really want to change something for your particular use case and then hit create. Once you've created a bucket, uh, you need to upload data in that bucket. So uh, your created bucket will show up here. You click that and you click on upload files and you can upload data from your local to this bucket uh, any data you upload will show up here once you have uploaded data for your project you go back to the navigation menu and go to google BigQuery. again i've pinned it to the top uh, so i can see it here otherwise if you scroll it down and you can find google BigQuery under the products tab so uh, once you're in the BigQuery console, in the left panel, you, you will see your project name here. So click on the project name. Uh, you would not see anything because you would not have created a data set. So the first thing is that you create a data set. Uh, a data set is basically a library that will contain all your data tables uh, that you will access or create new uh, during in, in the queries. So you hit create a data set and then again follow the steps as mentioned in the word doc uh, once you've created a data set the next thing you have to do is uh, create a table in that data set a table that you will refer to in your queries so you hit on the right side of the screen here you'll see the create table option select uh, create table from google cloud storage select your bucket select your data set from here and follow the steps as mentioned in the word document again so uh, any data that you create any table that you create in the data set will show up here under your projects under the data set uh, library now let us see some queries um, google big uh, big query supports standard sql query syntax uh, which really makes it a very ubiquitous tool uh, and very useful for, useful for people who have just had SQL experience and they want to uh, uh, try building a model or uh, any any complex analytical exercise on the data. So I'll go to some of my saved queries. So as you can see, these 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 query syntax are just the simple standard SQL queries we've been using. Um, for example, let me. So here, as you can see, I access my data 
uh, with by providing the uh, library name here so it's final project demo dot flights this is also pretty standard and then I can select a particular chunk in the code and then just just run the selected code and it shows me the out outputs here I can create a table uh, in the same data set or library that I just created so I'm creating a table named root delay within the library final project demo these are just some dummy data sets that I've used for this we'll, we'll be working on our different data set for our modeling exercise so uh, we have created a table here final project demo root delay and it shows up here in your library so you can click and uh, preview the results how the table looks like and you can see the results here you can perform joins uh, these, these I, i've shared these queries uh, in the folder you can perform joins and um, um, for, for, for actually it offers a wide variety of functions most of which is the same as what standard SQL supports some of these functions for example here we use join and we provide the primary key with a using um, a function so you can actually visit all the uh, functions and operators that Google BigQuery supports using these links in the document. Alright, so now uh, we will start, we will walk through uh, the actual modeling process. Let me just open the query here. Alright, so before we start playing with the code, uh, I'll just give you a brief overview of the data that I'm using. So this is a data about uh, customer churn in a telco form. Um, and these are some of the fields that the data contains. It's, it, it has a unique customer ID, uh, some demographic information about the customer and then some information about what services and what subscription plans uh, does, does the customer have and then um, data on what mode of payment he uses and what is his total usage in terms of monthly charges and total charges and then we have this final variable which is a flag that indicates whether the customer churned or not so uh, we will use this variable as the response variable for our model and uh, as most of you would be aware, logistic regression uh, is a classification model. Uh, it is a supervised classification, so it needs a response variable. And essentially, uh, the model will give us predictions about the probability of churn for a customer. So let's begin uh, playing with the model. Again, these codes have been shared in the uh, in the folder for data mining use case so first we will create a view uh, now a view is basically a, a virtual table uh, that is it's it's not permanently stored in your library um, you will uh, yeah so um, in this step what we're doing here is basically um, we are taking 70% of our data set for training the model uh, and then 10% of our data set each for evaluation and prediction and we are storing all the relevant columns that we want to use for modeling along with uh, this additional field which identifies what row index would be used for training evaluation or prediction into this view now one thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, when you're creating a view uh, it's not sufficient to just uh, name the view as per your, uh, you know, by referencing your data set and the view name. You also have to reference the project here. 
and you have to give the project ID for this. How would you get your project ID? You would simply go to the project here and adjacent to the name of your project, you will see the project ID here. So just copy paste that. So let us see uh, how this runs out. So we have an input view created here. So again, it shows all the fields, field names that we selected along with an extra field here, which is uh, okay. yeah, along with the extra field here, which just mentions whether uh, the particular row index is training or evaluation or test. Next, once the view is created, we will create a logistic regression model uh, on the training data set. Uh, we will store the model again under our library. And uh, the ML engine, the Google BigQuery ML engine supports modeling with the option statement here. You can specify the type of model and all the different feature, all the different options that are required for that particular model. Again, you would uh, find more on All right. I have not included a link here, but I will include it in the Word document. Uh, there's an extensive documentation on um, uh, what all models you can create, what all features you can use, how can you customize your model. Uh, that's very user friendly. So let me run this data set here. takes a while to run um, and uh, I, I already had a model here so it just replaced uh, with the same um, otherwise if you create a new model it will show up here and then uh, you click on that model and you can click on training and see all the different plots that it generates regarding how uh, the overall loss of the logistic function has reduced uh, over iterations and the learning rate and all the other parameters. So once you have uh, the model ready, uh, model trained, you can um, check out what is the weights associated with your uh, different variables. Again, uh, uh, Google provides an extensive online documentation on uh, how can you explore the different uh, features that model training has generated. One of the most important thing is to see the weights associated with each variable. So here you can see that for a categorical variable that has three categories, uh, these are the weights associated with these categories. Uh, a positive weight naturally means that uh, for a particular category, the probability of customer churning is uh, higher and a negative weight means that the probability of customer churning is lower. So next, uh, we want to see how our model performs on the evaluation set. The evaluation set basically is a holdout sample. So um, in traditional machine learning, you, you would train a model on a particular sample and then evaluate your model performance on, on the second sample, uh, which is the validation or the evaluation sample here. So this 
throws out all the relevant uh, model performance metrics you want to look at. It's pretty handy, very clean. And then next, uh, finally, we will make predictions on our test set using the model. So the test set is basically that unseen piece of data uh, where you do not know what the actual response is. And then you predict uh, the probability of a particular event using your model. So again, we can see that this is what the model throws out. Uh, it, for every row, which is basically a unique customer ID, it gives me uh, the predicted churn probability. So there's a 71% probability that uh, the customer would not churn in this particular case. So yeah, uh, this is all about modeling using uh, Google BigQuery. We can create uh, different types of models. Currently, I think it supports uh, logistic regression, linear regression, K, uh, clustering, uh, and a few other uh, option gives you a few other options to play with uh, TensorFlow models. Uh, those are models that have already been trained in some other platform and then you can probably use those models in Google BigQuery to predict on a test data set. Thank you.